And I ain't hit no drop in a minute. You know I'm about yeah. my business. Rappers Guy Podcast, episode 65. This is your host, Diggy Metro. Bills Pagliacci. And today we were back on the phone with Corey the Savior. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Corey, uh, we often listen or we often read into music business worldwide. Mm-hmm. Huge, okay. huge source for information. And you and your partner were recently uh, cited on that site. Yeah. One, yeah, one yeah. what did that feel like? Um, I mean, it was cool, man. You know, like, like, I've been a big fan of that publication for a long time. You know, it's like, it's, it's pretty interesting because it's like one of the top, I guess, trade publications in the music industry. So the most exciting part of it is just being, being seen like who all pays attention to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. People kind of hit me and be like, yo, man, like I've seen the article, we saw a report that you, that you did. So that's been the coolest part about it, man. But uh, yeah, that's been, that's been pretty dope, man. You know, hopefully it's the, the, the first of many more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because what's dope to me is that especially with something that like uh, music marketing, right? A lot of the time you're yeah. behind the scenes. So it's like, you don't really get the acclaim for, for the work that you're putting in. It's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's uh result driven, but no one really yeah. puts a, a name to the results. Mm-hmm. Like you see the artists get famous, you see them do big things, but you never know who got them famous. Yeah. So, yeah, man. And Oh, my bad. No, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say, like, that was kind of one of the, the biggest things we wanted to, to do with this report is, like, you know, even the marketing agencies that kind of put themselves out there, like, it, it's usually very much so, like, company-oriented. And, like, we still wanted to be able to provide, like, names and faces to who were the people, you know, behind this research and actually putting in the work to kind of figure this stuff out. But then also, because of exactly what you said, like, give people a little bit of context of, like, who exactly are the people that are running these these campaigns that you see making these artists into the massive arts because of TikTok and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I was just glad that we could get ahead of it <laughs> and be able to kind of, like, start this shift and build our own narrative before, like, other people, you know what I'm saying, started to kind of do that. So that, right. that, to me, has been the best part of it is, like, oh, like, we, we, we now have a bit more of an understanding of how exactly we can start to build, like, the narrative out. Um, not only just for ourselves, but just for, like, other people, like, behind the scenes who are doing similar things to what we're doing and, and maybe want to step into a, a similar position. So it's, it's been pretty cool overall, man. Like, it's, it's definitely been nothing but nothing but good things have come from it uh, so far. One of the questions I did want to ask you, in your line of business, how does TikTok, doing what it's doing, how does that affect you? I mean, so it's been really beneficial for us, man. Like, we were really early to TikTok. Like, my business partner, I remember, I think it was like late, maybe mid 2019 or late 2019 when he first ever hit me, he was like, yo, this TikTok thing, like we got to figure out because I think it's going to be big. And at the time, like I didn't really understand it. Um, but I was kind of like, yo, like let's do it. Like I, I, I think I, I think I see what you're saying, right? And then I feel like over the last two years, like we've just been kind of proven right. So I think there's a lot of advantages that have come with us being early adopters of of the platform and our marketing strategy. And even just like the way we kind of like talk about it. like when everybody else was sitting on TikTok and, you know, saying delete the app and the X, Y, Z, like we're the ones like, nah, but like hop on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right, like what's, your kind of thing, what's your kind of thing over there is not going to be duplicated by any other platform. Like it's, it's literally kind of what, what artists have been, have been begging for. So I think that now with a lot of the, the industry starting to finally come around to it and not even just the industry, like this, I think, the creative community as a, as a whole view TikTok differently than it did last year or 2020 and some of the years prior. So just kind of with the general, um, I guess this general narrative of TikTok changing in the creative landscape, like we've been, we started to kind of like rise with that. Cause like, Oh, these were the guys that were teaching, like, you know, what I'm saying? teaching people how to use it or even talking about how to use it way before other people were. Um, and then like, I mean, we're on TikTok ourselves. So a lot of the things that we tell artists to do, or, you know, or even some of the benefits that we preach uh, preach, uh, preach about it to artists that we feel ourselves. Like, I've gotten clients because of TikTok, right? Like, I've had people like, you guys reach out to me and just have, like, a really, like, good information to give me or, like, help me out in some way because they, they followed me on, on, on TikTok and, like, kind of found me over there. So it's been, like, massively beneficial to our business. You know, like, I think at this point, it's probably, like, one of our main priority platforms, you know, like, like I kind of take my TikTok a lot more seriously than, than some of my other platforms, but 
um, yeah, we uh, we uh, we as an agency are just like pretty invested in <laughs> in like where TikTok is going because, like I said, we we just have built so much off of the platform. Um, and then I I genuinely do think like that platform is going to kind of like fuck the industry up. You know what I'm saying? Just with some of the things they kind of have like planned and uh, and uh, or you know working on. So yeah, TikTok like getting with TikTok and just like um talking about the platform has been like massively massively like helpful for us. You know. Yeah, like one of the biggest things that kind of stuck out uh, to me was like that it was saying that um, within the article um, was that a lot of artists are organically um, gaining traction and they're um, yeah. automatically kind of gaining streams. So like when it comes to like with a marketing agency uh, like you guys, like does it kind of just uh, come down to like making a game plan of like what content to make or like is it more focused on uh, creating great content as far as like visually um, and also like like st- certain strategies that artists could use um, or is it still like kind of like paid uh, influencers or like targeted ads on TikTok or is it just like literally just organic? Yeah, man. So, I mean, all of it has its, its place in in the overall like, marketing strategy, right? And like some of the things make sense to do for some artists and it don't make sense to do for other artists. So like we start everybody, or I'll say this, like in a perfect world, when everything goes the way like we want it to go, we start with content. Just because content is typically the basis for like all the other strategies to work, right? Like you can't run a good ad if you don't have a good piece of content to run as an ad, right? Um, there are certain influencer strategies that we do that don't make sense if, if we don't have um, a particular piece of content to kind of run with it. So for us, like the, the crux of everything is content, right? And then marketing in general is, is one of the most expensive things that artists or just artists and their teams put their money into, right? Like, it's, it's very, very easy to, like, burn a lot of money doing marketing. So the other reason that we focus so much on content is that I think that that kind of, like, lessens the gap between the artists with a lot of money and the artists without a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, you have a, a, a million dollars, you know what I'm saying, in your bank account, but if an, another artist knows how to out-content you, like, they're probably going to get a lot more, you know what I'm saying? Um a lot more for what they would for nothing than what you may even be able to get out of that money. So I think like content has kind of become like the great equalizer. Right. And so I know how we personally kind of got to it is there was a point, I think like last year where we just kind of sat back and was like, all right, man, you know, we've had, you know, this amount of really successful campaigns this year. Let's sit back and like, see if we can find some commonalities between all of our like most successful campaigns. So I mean we're looking at people like like the twenty four K Goldens and, and things like that. Like our clients who like really kinda like took off. And then even ones who like maybe didn't like just like super blow up but went from let's say like ground zero to like ground four or five, right? Like didn't like pop off mainstream but had a lot of like success. And the biggest thing that we kept seeing across the board was that all of our most successful campaign uh, campaigns, the artists were really great content creators. Mm. Um and and even if like they weren't amazing content creators, like they understood enough to know how to at least stay consistent, and then to at least create like quality stuff that will make the other marketing things work. Like so, they're like, okay, well I can give you this video that works pretty well as an ad that I didn't need to go spend thousands of dollars on to kind of get credit for you. Um, so once we started to kind of notice that, it's like the light bulb just took for us. And we're like, hey, like in order for us to get the results that we want to get, at least with the strategy that we want to, that we want to use, right? Like at this point, we have a pretty, I'm a pretty core, like pretty defined strategy that we like to run clients to. It's like in order for that to work the way we want it to work, we have to get ours to the point to where they're at least like okay content credits, right? They don't have to be amazing, but they have to at least be like decent. (laughs) You know, like enough to knock out some pretty high quality stuff and be motivated to stay consistent because we know like what that's going to do for not only the page, and like those things that we have to spend money on. But a lot of times like content kind of becomes the like the catalyst for a lot of the like random marketing moments that happen, right? Like a like a your your fan sees your video and, and makes a video to your song and that video goes viral. Like a lot of times that stuff is catalyzed by like content that the artists make. So like we started kind of sitting back and trying to figure out like what's the best way to explain certain things to artists. Um, how can we like train them to be better content creators within the context of um, TikTok specifically, but then also just like other platforms, real shorts and things like that. And mm-hmm. so, like I said, I, I would say like really early on, even like the last time I talked to you guys, like content was still very much like a, a really important thing to us, but we were just starting to figure out how to train artists on content. It was one of those things like we as marketers understood it, 
and we understood how important it was, but it was a very hard thing to kind of like draw the line from my A to Z for artists. Mm-hmm. So I like fast forward to today, to now, um, we still recognize the importance of it, but I think we've become a lot better at like training artists on becoming content creators. Like we've been able to kind of like test out some systems and, and put some artists through some things that have worked out really well. Um, and so now, like to go back to your question in terms of like, what does it fit for us? Like, it's still, it's still number one for us. Like, I think in, in, if I have to pick, like, one marketing thing to focus on for any artist, I will always pick content because it's a skill set that stacks. It's a skill set that they can get better with over time. I mean, you know, and it's like so many great things can come out of it for very little money that if we see that happening, even if it's not, like, to a massive degree, right? Even if it's just, like, like people are, like, you, you get a couple thousand views and people say they like it. Like, even if it's just to a very small degree, mm-hmm. it it gives us confidence that the pay is going to work, right? Because it's like, hey, we were able to figure out that this thing works that didn't work for free. Now we know pretty much what we're getting into once we start putting money into it. And like that to me is the ideal situation to be into, right? Because like, like one way or another, you have to find out if people like like you or not or like your music or not. And it's like you're either going to figure it out for free with the content or you're going to figure it out with your money <laughs> through, through the pay. Right. And, and I, I personally would to figure it out for free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the free the free wave sounds definitely beneficial to me and also to a lot of artists out there who don't really have a a, a budget. Um, and then, you know, also what you yeah. said about just being able to, you know, be a little bit better with the content creation and, you know, being able to kind of like make music uh, that sounds good, but the content creation or how you're going to get that music out in front of people is like the one of those things you need to focus on because that's what it comes down to when it, uh, once it hits the air, once it hits, you know, those social media platforms, it's all about how fast it spreads or how it spreads. And, you know, yeah. if you're able to get people to interact with it as well. Yeah, I mean, it's always, man, it's a, it's a battle of attention, man. Like, this, like when it comes to content, it's like, how, how good are you at keeping people's attention? Some people know how to keep somebody's attention throughout a, a, a whole 10-minute video. Some people can only hold your attention for five seconds, right? Um, but I think, like, that's where content is kind of taking it. And I know, like, a lot of artists don't like that. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I see comments and videos all the time from artists who kind of talk about like, why do I have to be a content creator, right? Like, why can I just be an artist and, and make music and things? And it's like, you know, I think it it comes down to like thinking about how the consumer wants to find things that they like. Like, we're not forcing artists to make TikToks and things. We're not, we're not forcing them not to do anything. But we're not encouraging them to, to do it because like, we think they need to do it. It's like, no, bro, like, this is how people like to find things that they like. You're actively fighting against, um, like, user behavior, right? Like, if, if, if I can look at the average person or, and, and sometimes I'll, like, talk to my friends who aren't in music and I'll ask them things, I'll ask them about, like, how they're finding music, right? And, and it always points back to things like, oh, I, I heard this on TikTok. I saw this in the back of a meme. I saw this video kind of pop up and I like the song. And it's like, this is how people want to find music now, right? Like, people like being able to, Scroll through TikTok, laugh at a video, right? Get some relationship advice, mm-hmm, and then man. find a new find a new song that they like. Always, well, always in the same app. Like they didn't have to go anywhere. They got all that value um, without within one platform. And so, I think it's more about getting artists to be comfortable with just adopting it because it's not like it's going to change anytime soon. You know, it's like it may not be TikTok five years from now, but people people are pretty content oriented now. You know, what I'm saying like like we've all went. We all get so much of it and have have gone so long with it that like it's, it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, that going back to what I said earlier about it being your skill set at stacks. Like there's an artist today who, you know, maybe going to tackle TikTok and may not become an amazing content creator. Let's say in the next two years for what they they pop off on TikTok or something, but then a new platform comes along in, on the third year and they take what they kind of learn from. On, from TikTok and apply it to their new platform and then if they're able to find success and maybe blow on that, right? Like, so it's a skill that stacks because user behavior isn't going to change anytime soon. People like finding what they like through content. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just glad that like we've been able to kind of get like ahead of it and like I said, start figuring out like how to explain that to artists and how to even like train them on being better content creators because when we have clients come to us or artists come to us in general, like I don't expect everybody to come out of that and be like the most amazing content creator but it's like if you like you know if you suck or you weren't making content at all and i can get you to at least a three right and like that three is enough to like encourage you to stay consistent 
in a year and a half, now you're eight, and then you're making amazing videos. Like that's that's all that we want. Well, I mean, <laughs> like we, I mean, at at one point, it was just media training. Like there, yeah. people did interviews with radio stations and and this and that, and they were media trained. That was a term that went around. Now yeah. the media training is just creating content. We had an episode where um, I think it was Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park said that artists are so focused on content creation that they're missing uh, out on writing the best song of their life. And our stance on that was, you know, yeah, that might be true, but also you have to roll with the tide. Like you kind of have to go with where the times are at. You can't complain yeah. about what's working right now. It just is what's working. You know, yeah, you might miss out on that best track, but also, you know, too bad. That's that's just how it's going right now. I, that's always how it's been, you and, know? And I think one of the biggest things that you had touched on, Corey, uh, is that, you know, it becomes stackable as far as, like, just because you may not be doing so well on TikTok right now, eventually, you know, another platform is going to pop up eventually. I don't know if it's going to take over TikTok, but everybody always goes to that new thing, even when you think that there's never going to be another social platform that's going to pop up. But if you get yeah. good at content creation at any point, you still can be able to carry that stuff over into a next platform. It doesn't be like, become like a lost art or something that you're not going to be able to uh, capitalize on on another platform. Yeah. It just it just yeah. it moves on to the next, you know. And then you could take, uh, you know, when you make a TikTok video, now you could put it on Instagram as a reel. You could put it on YouTube as a short. Um, and then I'm pretty sure it's gonna be another platform later on down the road where you got add another like short, you know, short <laughs> segmented clip that's gonna get your music out there. So. That's one of the biggest yeah. things. It's like a required skill at this point. Yeah, man. I'd even say this too. Like, not even just like taking into consideration like new platforms popping up, but most of these platforms evolve and stick around. I mean, like, look at like YouTube or Facebook at this point, right? Like, YouTube has been around for years. You know, mm -hmm. like, you don't think that all of those YouTubers who hopped on there really early on don't have an advantage over all the YouTubers who are just joining today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because they were. They've been on the platform for so long. They, they've learned how to read the audience over there. They, they have connections within the platform, right? So there's always advantages that come with being like an early adopter on um, the certain things or even just being like early-ish, you know, like an early-ish adopter. So I always look at it like that as like, if you feel like the platform isn't going anywhere anytime soon, then like there's no reason not to start learning it today because it's like, hey, if you think that TikTok is still going to be here in five years, that means five years, that means the information you get today about how to use it and grow on it will still be beneficial for you for up to five years. That's a long time, you know what I'm saying, for something to be valuable. Um, <laughs> and so like, that's how we look at it. It's like, I mean, it, it takes a lot to bring a platform down, you know, like we've only seen so many platforms get massive and then kind of like, like, you know, air quote, like fall off. But, I can only um, think of my space. Like, like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The biggest thing might be my place, yeah. And that was um, another... And, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, like, it, it took a lot for my place to fall off. It took a little, like, cultural shift <laughs> for my place to fall off. You know what I'm and one of the things that kind of, like, you know, leads to showing that, you know, kind of TikTok has a way of sticking around is, like, um, I had seen an article where it was basically saying that now people are not only just discovering music on TikTok, like, mostly anything that they're searching up, they're no longer fully going to Google to, like, Google search for it. They're just going into TikTok and typing in whether it be how to do things, um, yeah. places to travel. So it's like they're taking a, a market share from Google and YouTube, technically, because they're all in the same company. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just going to show like where everything is like kind of geared toward. And I've seen in my real life, I looked over at my girl one night and she's like, oh, I'm trying to learn how to cook a recipe. And it's like, she's not going to Google for this recipe. She's on TikTok watching the recipe. So it's like, it's crazy how it's having an influence. Um, and it's going either further past music, even though TikTok is like a music driven platform for the most part. Yeah, man. Like, it's, it's interesting, man. Like TikTok is really building like a behemoth of a, of a media platform because it's like the users are super engaged. They leave to go look at stuff. They buy things, right? Like, you can get a lot of reach for relatively cheap, um, at least compared to, like, the other platforms. But, like, it's, like, it's interesting, like, where they're kind of, like, building out. So, like, and it goes back to what I was just saying. Like, I don't think TikTok is going away, at least for the next five years, you know? So, like, somebody that, that learns it today or starts figuring it out today will have an advantage three years, you know, over the person that, just decide to start using it, right? Like, you have three years in over that person. They'll be learning things that you figured out already. You know, so I always think about, like, that element of it is, like, unless you plan on, like, really quitting, or what I always tell artists is, like, unless you plan to, like, quit music, you know, anytime soon, let's say over the next, like, two to five years, then, bro, you got to do this shit. <laughs> like, hey, gotta, that's what it is. Out. Yeah, you got to start putting something together because it's not going well. Right. Now, I, I did want to talk about one thing that I saw in that article. 
uh, you guys said on average, uh, it took about an 18 month span for people to go viral, right? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. now with that, is that something that you're encouraging artists to stick with one song and kind of just drive it for as long as they can? Or is that something where it's like, just keep on dropping and continue to promote and, you know, release new music? Yes, I think it depends on like where they are, right? So if you're new to the platform and it, or let's say you don't necessarily have like a core song that you want to push, maybe you have a handful of, of songs that you think could work, but you don't know which one is the one, then you should be spending a large majority of that time just like testing out music on the platform, right? Like making content around different songs that you, you've already released and maybe plan to release just to get an idea of what people want to hear from you. You know, I do think that as soon as you see something that works for you and you see something that's giving you like an overwhelming, overwhelmingly like positive response, that's when the next majority of your content pieces should be focused around that one song. Because I mean, that's how TikTok kind of works. Right? Like it's, it's all about like repetition based. It's like you have to like feed it into people's heads as much as you can because they're going to forget about it in 20 seconds, you know, when they scroll mm -hmm. past and go look right. at the, ne the next thing. Right. So it's like, you can't just like post it one or two times. Like, oh, people like this. So, like, cool. I'm gonna move on to the next thing. But like, no, they're gonna forget about it by the end of the week. You might have to put 200, 500, you know what I'm saying, thousand videos in front of their face for it to like really click and then spark the way that you wanted to spark. So, so I do think it depends on what the artist is. If, if nothing's been figured out, yeah, experiment, right? Like, because sometimes different songs give you like different content ideas. Um, it can be easier to stay consistent because you can like bounce around to a couple of different things. But the moment you see something working and like, like I said, you see it like, and you, like you'll know too, like you'll know when it's working. Like everybody will have nice things to say, to say your, your, your streams jump up and all the, the great music things you want to see go up, start to go up, right? Like once you see that, it's like, no, nah, lock in, lock in and, 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 and do it until people start to get sick of it. Yeah, because I even see sometimes that it'll be some artists that they be posting like the same song for like 600 days. Like they'll like do like a counter on TikTok and just keep reposting the same song over and over. And I think for a lot yeah. of time, um, I think I also seen you have posted a video on uh, TikTok too about that. Like sometimes if something is working, you know, artists want to just instantly go something different. And I, I can understand why, because it's like, you know, re repeating the same thing over and over and not seeing that initial, uh, you know, engagement or just saying, like, okay, now I, th this happened for this one song. Let me try to see if I get this follow the same thing for this other song that I have. And it doesn't always uh cross over that way. And then, you know, yeah. once again, like once you I've I've definitely experienced it myself. Like I've definitely had some songs like, ah, I see some traction, but artist mind be like, oh, let me just, just try everything in the world and just try to get something else to stick. Um and you know, so that's probably something that it just kind of steers artists the wrong way. Cause it's like, yeah, I don't wanna keep reposting the same song over and over and over, especially if I'm dropping something new. But at the same time, if it's working. Then, you know. well, what I would what I would tell an artist in that situation is like, does McDonald's stop promoting the Big Mac because people have seen the Big Mac before? That's, that's a fact. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I yeah. think that I think we don't make parallels with other businesses often enough. And I think that when you get to the root of music, the music industry and the music business, I think it's the same thing. We're pushing a product, right? If you knew that people like the product, you're not going to stop promoting it just because they know what the product is. Mm -hmm. There's new Big yeah. Mac commercials all the time. There's new commercials for the same shit that you've seen for years all the time. They'll even bring it back and be like, the new and improved. And it like for music, that could be like a remix of the song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that we need to make more parallels with that and understand that like promoting the same song over and over isn't a bad thing. And those comments that are like, Oh, this song again? It's like, bro, those people don't understand the industry. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can't look at those comments and get offended by them. And you can't look at those comments and be like, maybe I should post some new shit. Especially if you see it working with the masses. Because what those people are forgetting is, yeah, maybe you saw this song before, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. might have been the reason why you followed me. Okay, cool. But these new people that are seeing it, this is the first time they're seeing it. So in my eyes... I'm going to try to get all these new viewers, whether that bothers you or not. If you have to unfollow me, I get it. But I'm going to try to get these new eyes instead of just worrying about the fans who have listened to it before. And on top of that, at that point, it's kind of your fault yeah. being stuck in, like, I'm popping up on your For You page for a reason, so you enjoy the music. You enjoy what I'm right. doing. So, like, you know, it's kind of your fault. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I do think, too, like, there can, there can be a balance, right? Like, like we're not saying 
like don't drop new music or you know don't tell people about it it's like it's just the thing that's working needs to be with majority of your attention and focus because to your point it's, it's bringing in the new people so i do think that like there's a there's a possibility of like having this one thing that's running and you know, like i said you're putting like 89 percent of your energy into it and then you know depending on how high your infrastructure is or, you know, even to some degree, like how big your marketing budget and things like that are. Like you can, you can do both, right? Like, like we've had clients where um, we have this strategy that we call like the lightning rod strategy, right? And like, so the whole idea behind it is that um, we test out a bunch of different things until we find the one song that works, like works the best. And as soon as we figure it out, like that becomes our lead song, right? So most of the ads are, are focused around it most of the influencer campaigns are focused around like everything we we, we do for like the next like four to six months to focus around that song um, because it becomes the lightning rod to us. It becomes the thing that's now attracting all the new people over. But while we're doing that, we're still encouraging the artists like, hey, like drop new music, drop new videos, drop X, Y, Z type of content so you can feed all the new people that are coming to the funnel because that, that, that does need to be like the happy balance, right? Like you have to, you have to do the thing that works in terms of like getting new people and then you have to show the old people like, hey, I see you, like I care about you, like I want you to also be happy here, right? Like and, and feel like you're getting something new out of it. So it is, it is a fight, it is a balance, and I think that like if I have to pick one over the other, I'm always going to go with keep running the thing that works. Mm-hmm. But it's like if the artist has the infrastructure to handle it, and like I said, the marketing budget that have to handle it, and like they know how to divert their attention and or split their attention in a good way, I do think it can be done. It just it's like eighty to ninety percent of the attention needs to go to whatever the fuck is working. Right. And then the other 10% can go to whatever else you want to do. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to bring it back to McDonald's, right? So, yeah. all right, you go into McDonald's for the Big Mac because you know what a Big Mac is. You love the Big Mac. You go for a Big Mac, right? But then when you're staring at the menu, you see that they have this new bacon ranch burger sandwich and that shit looks good to you, right? Yeah. You might buy the bacon ranch burger because it looks good to you. But what brought you to McDonald's was the Big Mac. So mm-hmm. if you're pushing a yeah. song, right, and you're pushing that song every single day and 80 to 90% of your infrastructure is built around that song, right, but you're still dropping new music, yeah, they came to the page for that song, right? But then they saw all the new songs and they might have found their new favorite song just by coming for that one song. So that's yeah. why you would keep on pushing that initial like hit record or whatever your hit would be. And if McDonald's, you hear this amazing sandwich he just brought up, cut that check. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that analogy is beautiful, bro. I'm definitely going to use that. Hang along. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really makes sure. sense. Yeah, as soon as you said it, brother, the light bulb just like clicked in my head. I was like, man, that's the perfect analogy to do. Because it makes <laughs> sense. Like, it, again, w- when we talk on this podcast, we try to like bring up like Doritos. We try to bring up like different products that still work the same exact way. A lot of the times, like I'll make comparisons to clothing, right? And it's like, there might be some brands, like if you get a paper planes hat, chances are the paper planes hat that you're going for is the black joint with the the paper plane on it, right? And people buy that. But if you go to paper planes website, they have other hats. You might go for that hat and buy a different hat. Like it works across the board with every single industry. But we make the mistake of thinking because Music is an art form and it's like very compassionate. We make the mistake of forgetting that it's a business and that there's similar structure to every other business. And I think if people just use their brains more in a business sense and started to understand what product is, that product goes across the board. Like if you're an amazing drug dealer, I bet you would also be a really good salesman for cars. I bet you'd be a really good salesman for clothing. I think that like having a business sense as a whole is a skill, right? So that applies yeah. to music, that applies to clothes, that applies to literally everything, anything under the sun that involves business. And I think artists quite often just get trapped in the, I just want to be an artist thing, right? And and so they don't want to promote their music and they don't want to do all the TikToks and the Instagram videos and they don't want to create content. But like, if you look at every other business, commercials are running nonstop. Mm -hmm. And and we look at, like the first time we talked to you, we were talking about artists who have six-figure budgets for their uh, marketing campaigns, right? And it's like, those are big-name artists. They wouldn't have a six-figure budget if they weren't big-name artists. Why is a big-name artist who's already known running a campaign for that much money? 
right? So if you're up against that and you're looking at, okay, there's there's Drake who's spending a million dollars a month doing uh, his campaign, right? And you're an unknown artist. You have to understand what you're up against when it comes to that. Like, like, dude, that guy is already known by the world, right? And he's still marketing yeah. his music. So you yourself living in, in whatever small town and having the internet uh, to access and you have TikTok that is able to push this stuff to a bunch of different consumers and for the cheap, you have to be on top of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, I think, I think artists are hearing in enough places where a vast majority of them see that. Right. Like I do think like the, the general landscape around content creation or the, the general art attitude around content creation now is much different than it was like a year or two ago. But yeah, anytime I have that, that conversation with smaller artists, I'm just like, hey, man, you know, once again, it, it, it goes back to the people, bro. As an artist, like, your job is to service the people in a sense, right? Like, how much of a service to the people is your art, right? And it's like, if, these, if this is the way that people choose to consume things, then you have to get in line with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> because yeah. if not, if I, it's, it's going to be a battle of your art versus the way that people typically want to do things. And the way that people typically want to do things is always going to win. Um, because it's more, it's more of them than, than it is if you write. Um, so, but, I don't know, man. I just, I get confused by it. I, I really do feel like content is a great equalizer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, like, like you could be in your bedroom, see a nobody, and the right video on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok will literally change your life. You know? And I always equate it back to like artists in the nineties standing on the corner selling CDs, you know, like that was kind of the thing that they felt like they had to do back then. Like that was their kind of way out. And I don't know, man, like I personally would much rather sit in my room. Yeah. Make a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Cause the, cor- the corner, <laughs> the corner is now, the corner is now in your pocket, you yeah. know, like, yeah, like exactly. you don't have to go exactly. anywhere that, that whole, yeah. like, if you look at it in a city landscape, right? Like back in the right. day, they're probably going to different blocks in order to not, you know, step on each other's toes and not, there's so many different uh, platforms that you could be promoting your stuff to. And there's so many different audiences on each platform that like you have the whole world kind of in the palm of your hand. So you have to utilize that. And for the artists who don't want to utilize that, it's kind of like it's getting to a point where it's like, if you don't do this, you're just going to get ran past by every single artist that is willing that to, to do, do it. it. And then on top of that, it's like you can. The whole thing that artists usually complain about or initially was, I don't have enough money to market my music. How, how am I supposed to make it? Yep. Then on the other side of it, I don't want to make any content because I feel like that's a waste of time. It's taking away from my creativity. So it's like, all right, so both avenues that's trying to get you to the point where you want to be in your career, you're literally saying no to. Well, I think this is the same for just making excuses. Yeah, you know? that's like, what it comes yeah, down you could, to, yeah. you could show up late to your job and you could make every excuse Oh, this, I lost my wallet. Oh, this happened, that happened. But at the end of the day, you were still just late to your job, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like now you could make every excuse under the sun when it comes to content creation. You could be like, look, I'm an artist. I'm not a content creator. This is all goofy. I don't want to make TikToks, this and that. But at the end of the day, if that's the only thing that's separating you from someone who's uh, becoming successful and you choose not to do it, that's a choice. Mm-hmm. And and you're yep. going to deal with the repercussions of not doing that. And and that's what I think more artists have to kind of focus in on is that you're kind of you're you're dealing with self-inflicted harm. You're not making it because you're not choosing to do the path that actually works. You're choosing to do the path that maybe worked back in the day. Like there's still artists who will comment on our page and be like, "I still sell CDs." And it's like, "Bro, no one has a CD player." Who are you selling CDs to? And if there's people buying your CDs, like I know because we're close to New York City, that back in the day, people would literally make you buy their CD. It wasn't like a choice. You would walk past someone, they would hand you a CD, and then they'd be like, yo, that's $10. And you're like, fam, I don't even want this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, if if, if you're flipping 100 CDs by that, by strong arming people into buying them, that's not a successful marketing tool. They're probably walking yeah, I mean, away from you and throwing them out. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, even if you are finding success, so I've actually met a couple of artists who like, you know, they're definitely outliers, but um, that, there's a weird ecosystem here in Atlanta too for people that do it. But it's like, why can't you do all of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. why, if you're really that type of artist where like, you just, you just have to be out <laughs> on the corner, like touching the people. It's like, bro, why not like wake up in the morning, 
know what I'm saying? Post your three TikToks, you know, post your Instagram reels, set your ad up real quick and then go and then go hit the corner and sell TV because now you have an entire infrastructure firing off. You know, you have your ads you have all these these social media things collecting new people and new attention while you're out doing the more real world stuff. So it's like there's even a time and a place for all that stuff. But I think artists kinda of feel like it's an either or type of thing. Like, yo, either I'm just like, you know, very traditionalist artist that does it by the old ways or I'm like this new age artist that only focuses on social media. It's like, I mean, you, you have the capacity to do both. There are elements about each of those areas that you like. Like, you can do both, right? But it's like, like you said, like, it's like don't be, don't be stupid about it. Like, don't pass upon the one that's obviously going to give you the biggest return because you want to focus on the thing that just feels more comfortable for you. Like, I, I personally think, like, that's stupid. And, I mean, I've started to kind of be hard for artists about it. I'm like, look, bro, like, Either, I don't know, I feel like if you're not spending at least like three to five K a month on your marketing, there's no reason you shouldn't be making content. I mean, even if you are spending that type of money, it'd be great for you to make content on top of that. But it's like, especially if you're not spending that type of money, it's like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have the, the outward resources to compete with people. Um, if you're not going to make content, content is a great equalizer. Like I said, like I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen clients post videos that equated to thousands of dollars of ad spends for other clients. I'm like, man, it's crazy. This person got the same result with this one post that it took us thousands of dollars to get for this, this person. So it's like, huh. content is a great equalizer. Content is the thing that makes it to where an artist in his bedroom has the potential to compete, at least attention-wise, with an artist that is 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times bigger than they are. Because they, at least, they, they can learn to understand that game much better than they can and gain the attention a lot faster. And so, like, I don't know. I feel like it is the thing that independent artists have been asking for for years, right? Like, they always talk about, like, having a great equalizer. It's not fair that major artists have all the access to the playlists and, right. and they have the big basis and they have the X, Y, Z. And it's like, but I wish there was a way that, like, we could compete. And it's like, you can, bro. Like, go make a video and put it on the internet. Because technically at this <laughs> point, yeah, technically at this point, we have the advantage. Everything's literally in our pocket. We can upload music whenever we want to. Even they said Spotify is at, what, 100,000 songs yeah, now, per day? Now it's 100,000. Right. So, like, everybody has everything disposable right there in their pocket. And so if you're not using it, then you can't really look at anybody else but yourself. You're shooting yourself yeah. in the foot if you don't use these things. And another thing I wanted to say was, like, uh, it would be, like, me telling you that if you go to this specific corner in the city— you'd sell 100 CDs right now. Mm -hmm. If you went to this specific corner, you will sell 100 CDs. And you said to me, nah, I don't like that corner. Right? It's yeah. like, it's like, yo, even if you were looking at it in terms of you selling CDs, if someone told you that one specific street was like a hotbed for selling CDs, you would go to that street. You wouldn't be like, nah, I don't like that street. Or nah, I like this other street that has a lesser return. You would just go to that street go. to sell. So so it's like, yeah, yeah, we're telling you right now by making content and by pushing content specifically on TikTok, but also on Instagram, also on YouTube, also on all these platforms, you're going to have a better return than what you're currently doing for you to turn around yeah. and be like, I don't want to do that or I don't like that. To me, that's just bad business. Yeah. Like that just talks to that speaks to a bad business mind because you're not willing to do the things that would actually make your business successful. And like, again, we're bringing this back to storefronts. Like, this is what we are, man. We're small businesses. Like, every single one of us is a small business, right? So it's like we have to act like small businesses. When you walk past like a, a newly opened chicken shop and then you look down the street and you see that there's flyers on everyone's car. Like you're going to sit there and you're going to understand that there's a reason why they're promoting that way. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to get people in their store. We have to do the same thing. And currently that form of putting flyers in everyone's car mm -hmm. is just promoting on all these different platforms. And yeah, uh, Corey, I had a question. So like, say you guys do have like a successful uh, campaign or just you're going to run into an artist who may have been posting, you know, their music and kind of got some traction. Is there ever a time where you see that a video or maybe a song make essentially go viral on TikTok and it doesn't automatically equate to streams? Like, is it always an easy conversion process that if it's a, if it's moving on TikTok that it's going to equate to streams? I know in the, um, the article you guys mentioned it, sometimes it will like garnish millions of streams. But do you feel like that's always the case or is it like usually sometimes maybe hit or miss? I think it depends on like the context of the, of, of how the song goes viral. Right? So like, for example, an artist that 
let's say they have a, a song go viral because of a performance video they did, their artist is more than likely going to see a lot more stream conversions than, like, let's say, I don't know, um, let's say, like, a song is going viral on the platform is, like, a joke. I, th- I think at some point that is, like, a, a spillover, like, regardless. You know what I'm saying? Um, or irregardless, just because, like, people's curiosity kind of takes the better of them, the, the bigger a song gets in a particular platform. It's like, you know, even if the song is, like, terrible, like, there's a song, I can't think of the name of it, but there was a song on Broadway on TikTok, like, two weeks ago that was horrible, in my opinion. Um, but, like, I kept hearing it so much that eventually I was like, bro, I have to go listen to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I yeah. have to go, I have to go see it. You know, I have to, I have to get it out of my system, like, learn to hate the song all the way so I can just never care again. And so a lot of people are like that. Like most people, I, I would argue most people are like that. If you hear something enough, eventually you'll go check it out. So Unfortunately. I do think there, <laughs> that, yeah, there, there can be like context or situations where it doesn't like convert over like one to one. But if it gets massive enough on the platform, it, it's going to convert over. Like it's, it's, it's pretty rare to see it not, not happen. I, I, we have, we've had certain campaigns before we've seen like stuff like that happen. Um, like, we had a guy once whose campaign was going really viral on TikTok um, because people didn't like the song. And it was pretty interesting. Like, I mean, you probably get, like, let's say, like, 20, 30 comments a day. Let's say 20 comments a day, and, like, 18 of them will be, like, bad comments. Uh-huh. Um, but then those 18 people would tag, like, four or five people being like, yo, like, look at this. So it's like, yo, 18 people commenting negative things, tag four other people. We got an extra 80 people reach on this. Uh, and then, like, he started, like, picking up a lot of traction, but the song wasn't moving. But I I personally believe, like, if that artist had stuck it out long enough, like, he would have went viral because of that. He he ended up a, a, a initially, well, eventually, like, killing off the campaign, which I can understand. Like, his, his ego couldn't handle it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I could, I could, I could understand that. That's but tough. I remember telling him, <laughs> yeah, I remember telling him, but I said, bro, I think if you rob this out for the next, like, three or four months, I, three or four months, I, said, I think the internet will joke you into being a viral hit. And it's, that's happened before. You know, it like, happens, like, yeah. No. Yeah, Ice yeah. JJ Fish and all these. Everybody, 50 like, Tyson. a lot of people, yeah. Yeah. But the Ice Spice girl, I was just talking to a friend about that. Like, when the, the whole Munch song first came out, like, the what, the very first week of it was TikTok laughing at it and, like, making fun of it. Yeah. And then the next week, it was every fucking where. And it was just regular viral. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, the internet has accidentally made superstars out of lots of people. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> I was telling him that, like, that, like, yo, but I really think you ride this wave, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could, you could, you could get shit done to being the next viral artist. You know what I'm saying? You take that moment, you drop some shit that do like, and you can flip it, bro. You'll be good. But he didn't want to do that. So I can understand. But, um, but yeah, I do think, like I said, I do think there are some instances where it doesn't like translate over immediately. But usually the bigger the song gets on the platform, eventually, like, people's curiosity kind of takes over. And there is some type of conversion. Like, it may not be massive, but people are going to go check it out. Yeah. Like, even when you mentioned Ice Spice, uh, I think. I first like encountered her when I guess it was like they was making a meme like you're from the Bronx so I know that you're dirty so I think this was like a song she made I guess previously yeah. before I swear like two weeks later the Munch song was out she was flying out to go see Drake she's a little TJ I was like yo what just happened I thought that this was like a meme as like a, of an artist and the next thing you know <laughs> it's going viral it's going crazy so it's, it's just crazy how it just sometimes even a bad criticism you know like I say good press I mean bad press is still good press regardless you just never know, yeah. but sometimes what even if you are being taken as a joke, because sometimes you can get caught into something and it kind of make like kind of get away from you, but it doesn't mean that you can't fully turn it around and kind of put yourself in a better position. I also think it speaks to leverage. Like if you're if you're going viral, and even if it's because people hate you, right? If you're building up steam and you have the numbers to back something up, and your your idea or your ideal situation is that you're going to get a, a label deal, a label's still going to look at all those numbers and they're still going to look at that and be like, yo, maybe this would be a commodity for us if we took on this act. Yeah, people are making fun of them, but people are also engaging a lot with them. So I'm sure I'm sure that you wouldn't be the first artist who got signed by being a terrible artist. I mean, we've heard terrible yeah. artists get mm-hmm. signed. And at the same time, you got your little 15 minutes of fame, go grab that bag. And right. in that little bit of time that you have, grab the bag, understand if your business is, order, your business is, is in order. And just try to put your best foot forward at that point. Because like like we always say, being a rapper is like being a running back. Like even if you do get put on like three to five years and after that, it's just like, yo, what's, what's going to happen next? Right. So, if you're lucky, you get yeah, a 10-year you know career. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about attention, man. Like like you said, like, I, I don't know. I think I'll take the artist that like 
knows how to get attention but has like okay music over the arts that has amazing music but doesn't know how to do it because like you can always like fix the well not always but there are easier ways to fix the music right like we can put you in the room with the right producers or get you a songwriter or like mm-hmm. you know get you cool features like we can we can polish up and fix that part of it learning how to get attention is a hard thing to do like even labels don't have to figure out that's why they sign artists like after they get the attention it's like oh you did the hard part we can we can figure everything else about this is easy to us what you just did is the hard part <laughs> you know Dude, so and if, like, you, oh. if you look at if you look at like a uh, cardi b as an example like yeah. cardi b is a perfect example of someone who everyone at first was just liking because she made funny videos and yeah. she sits down with the right writers she sits down with the right producers and now Cardi B, if you mention her name in hip hop, she's looked at as a serious artist. Mm-hmm. She's not looked yeah. at as a joke anymore. And when she first came yeah. out, it was all joke. So you got to look at that. And, and that's exactly what we're referring to when we're saying that you could take an artist who is more, uh, you know, made fun of or isn't necessarily uh, welcomed with open arms and you could turn them into a mainstream success. Cardi B would be a perfect example of that. That, that song with, uh, I think the artist's name was Jocelyn, the Do It Like It's My B-Day. It, it sounded like a joke to me, but it shit went viral. And then yeah. women are using it for like their birthdays mm-hmm. and using it as a joke, but it still helps, you know, her at the, in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, man, the internet will, the internet will bless somebody random like every couple of months. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, yo, it could be you. You know what I'm saying? At mm-hmm. least put your hat in the ring because it could be you. For sure. <laughs> Uh, Corey, I, I want to say that we really appreciate you for coming on again. You're always a great guest. Uh, it's always great conversations with you. Um, yeah, appreciate it, man. yeah, I don't want to hold you for too much longer. So, uh, yeah, we're going to close this up, but, uh, yeah, we appreciate you. Uh, congrats on you guys being mentioned on that website. That is a, yeah, a you, it's a really good look and it's, it's big for you guys. And, and I love that. Love to uh, see it. Yeah, I love the continued success that you're having, and um, hopefully we could uh, find something to talk about in a in a couple months. Yeah, let me know, man. If you see something and you think it makes sense, bro, just, just hit my line. You know, uh, I'm, I'm always down to have a good conversation. Absolutely, bro. Appreciate you. All right, Corey. All right, thank y'all, man. Y'all enjoy y'all day and be safe. You All right, love, thank bro. you, bro. You too. Peace. All right. I think we got everything that we needed out of that conversation. I mm-hmm. think Corey, Corey is just a gold mine of, of understanding the marketing side of music. And I think that for the artists sitting at home right now, if you really listen to that, transcribe it, understand everything he was saying, that guy actually does this for real. So it's not, we're not talking to someone who's never seen uh, an actual successful artist happen. And why I say a successful artist happen is because this is something that can be made. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he he knows how to take an artist who is on the ground level and actually skyrocket them to the top using different things in the background, marketing tools. Uh, if you listen to our initial episode, he went over some of those marketing tools. But I want everyone who just listened to this episode just to know that like the tools are all there. Mm-hmm. Like you're hearing, you you always hear people talk about how the tools are right in your pocket. And like I said on the episode, it is a choice of yours if you're not utilizing those tools. So, like, please do yourself a favor. Get on TikTok if you're not on TikTok. Start marketing your music if you haven't done it before. Stop posting clips of your song with a, a still background and expecting that to do numbers. Like, this is this is a real thing. You have to create content if you want to go somewhere with this. Get in there, get in that work. And, like, you know... You know, when Corey was mentioning, like, you know, when he was working with 24K Golden, shit, the fucking, he had, a, I forgot, it was like probably a few months ago, uh, he had posted like a song where he wanted people to do like an open verse challenge. In my mind, I did the shit. But in my mind, I was like, oh shit, this is Corey behind this. Like later on when it came to find out that he was working with 24, 24K Golden, it's like, oh shit, this is what the marketing thing that he's talking about. And it seems like it's just regular stuff, but there's a mastermind and there's a whole machine going on behind it. And it'll be right in front of your face and you don't even realize it because one of the best things with marketing is if making it seem so organic that it don't seem like you're being marketed to. And if you think about it, look at all the commercials you may see to this day. You'll see some wild shit happen in a commercial and you just be like, why the fuck was this about home insurance? This has nothing to do with anything. It had more so to do about catching your attention and keeping you there for that specific time. And then at the end, just saying, oh yeah, home insurance. Now you're looking for home insurance. You think of that fucking commercial. Now that you got you in business with them. 
And if you're sitting at home with your phone right now, download TikTok. If you're a producer, make duet videos. Do the beat. Have that playing. Have rappers and singers rap over it. Have have singers sing over it. You know, like these things are all things that work and you see them constantly. You see all these people rapping on the same exact beat, on the same duet, and you're you're not understanding that like these are tools that just work. You're like you, you have all the tools right in front of you. Even if you're just a regular Instagram user, I'm sure you've seen certain reels go by you and you go, why does everyone rap on that beat? The reason being is that that's just that's one of those marketing tools that works. So see what's working before you, you know, read into it. And go and make the same stuff. Like, you don't have to come up, you don't have to be the most monumental artist who uh, created the new thing. You could just kind of uh, catch the ball while it's rolling. And then be innovative as time goes on. And I just thought about it again. There was a random ass fucking uh, artist on TikTok who got on a Russ song. And then she's in a Russ video, all of a TikTok, all of a doing a duet, or like one of those versus challenge. Yo, it's out there. Yeah, I gotta do it. I know I hate doing this shit sometimes, but I, I'll have my spurts while I'll go on like a three-month run of posting consistently on TikTok and then I'll stop. But then you see Corey in, within, in the, within the article saying that was like 18 months and it's like in my mind, it's like, God damn. But as an artist, I know I can't be sitting here making excuses and I know I can't make excuses for that shit. It's like, yo, you got to get out there and post. And also like, bro, it's 18 months. Yes, 18 months seems like a long time, but that could be for a crazy amount of money for the rest of your life. So mm. it's like, are you willing to sacrifice 18 months of hard work for a lifetime of luxury? And like, that's what you really got to think about. And yet it's not going to happen for every single person, right? Like 18 months is not like, oh, all I got to do is 18 months. It, that's not how it works for every single person. It might be five years for one person. It might be eight years for one person. But 18 months of sacrifice to get to something that you are passionate about, that you have dreams about, and that you see yourself being successful in. If you tell me that you're not willing to put in 18 months of work, I think that you weren't trying to do this from the beginning. And then go back to our episode about um, like the mind-numbing content and just you know kind of understand. We were saying exactly the same things, and we didn't even have that conversation with Corey before. It's just like, yeah, it sucks, but what are you going to do about it? You got to just get out there and make it. And on top of that, you still can... Take a bunch of content, film it all beforehand, one month, edit everything, get everything ready, and then just have a fucking uh, a website release it for you or like one of these apps that can just release it for you on a schedule. And it's automated at that point. You know, it's nothing you got to really worry about. When you're on TikTok, if you have a video that's like, you know, your skin is showing, like the sun is shining on you, you can literally use that same video, put a facial expression or just you showing your environment and repost that video constantly over and over and over again. And change whether it be the text of the um, on the video, whether it be changing the song of the video. You, it's really simple. Once you find something that can grab somebody's attention, you can literally use it over and over and over again. Because there's billions of people in this world, and TikTok is going to do nothing else but spread your shit. And it also will limit it if it doesn't do if it doesn't catch people's attention or doesn't keep them for long enough. And I just want to make one last point for anything that you're trying to get good at, for anything that you're trying to do. There is a learning curve. And like, uh, if you wanted to make it to the NBA and they said you have to practice hard all year round, if your goal is to make it to the NBA, you're just going to do the practice. Mm -hmm. You're just going to do it. Like, it's not like you're going to be like, oh, I don't like practice and I'll still make it. It's like, nah, bro. In order to get good enough at this, to do it full time, to do this as your career, you have to practice. So if you look at any other thing in life, extracurricular or not, if you want to get good at something, you have to constantly do it. You mm -hmm. have to practice. It's all repetition. So I would say, you know, make that sacrifice. Do what you have to do in order to make it. And trust me, the payoff after those 18 months pass, which 18 months to me is nothing. Nah. They're like, that to me is nothing. I, 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 I've been doing shit for fucking 15 years. That's an you know accelerated fucking program at a school somewhere. Right. And so, that's even more work you got to possibly put in for right. that. So, so if you look at it like that, I just think that if you guys are willing to sacrifice those 18 months to post the same content and try to get the ball rolling, I think that in the long run, you'll look back and go, thank God I put those 18 months in. Just practice. Like, you can't be Allen Iverson before you're Allen, uh, Allen Iverson. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Only he can say that. Practice. Who's talking about practice? Like, right. y'all can't say that. You got to practice. You got to get better at it. And that's what's going to get you to where you want to be. 
All right, guys. Uh, Rappers Guy Podcast, we're signing out. This is Diggy Mashfro. Bales Pagliacci. Peace out, guys.